So welcome to the show. This is a removal bucket that is used for removing sections of concrete pavement when roads are redone. It's a U-shaped bucket and you can scoop like whole whole chunks of road out with it and load it on dump trucks. And there is a few cracks in here that the operator has noticed last night. So, so today on this beautiful day, we're out here on this excavator. This is a concrete removal bucket and it's cracked one, two, three ways from Sunday. And I cut these out here. We're out in the middle of nowhere, working out of my Amazon van. And there is no air here. There's nothing here. So we're using Rock Mount Electra cutting rods. And with those cutting rods, you can cut without air. It's almost like carbon air art gouging without the carbon and without the air. It cuts real nice. It helps when you can rotate the bucket so the molten stuff falls down. You don't have to push it out of the way with the rod, which I heard is possible, but it's above my skill level or pay level. And uh, now that this is somewhat clean, no carbon deposits in there, even if there's a little bit slag in it, I'm gonna hit it with a chipping hammer a little bit, then run a grinder over it, and then weld this all back up with some uh, Polaris AAA. And then I'm gonna reinforce it with some AR400 plates. Or not. If you look at it, how it teeter-totters here, how the bucket is all wavy and shaped, it's sitting right on the existing weld, which is flush. It's not standing proud. But the problem is, with that teeter-totter in there, it, it would be outrageous to weld this all up. And if I make a slice, a cut, to bend it or cut the plate in two to put it over it, that would defeat the purpose of that fish plate. So really, short of having a 50 or 100 ton press to shape the plate, the fish plate is not going to happen. So, let's get to it. So this is now all gouged out pretty deep, like an inch, inch and a quarter, I'd say, cleaned up enough, not, not perfect by no means, but I mean, deep gouged out, the crack chased as far as I could, no loose slag on it, ground chipped, wire brushed. So now let's lay some Polaris in there. So if you don't know anything, always start by reading the box. This stuff is high strength alloy, 98,000 tensile, uh, excellent AC stability. Okay, but we're gonna weld this in DC. Yeah, DC electrode positive. And then uh, eighth inch, 120 amps. So that's what we're gonna weld this with. We're gonna set that up now. So as I'm welding here, all of a sudden the heat is pulling this and the crack is opening up there. So this crack apparently had two legs, which one of them was invisible to me when I started. So that means a little bit more gouging here. Take that guy out of there and fill that whole gap up. So according to rock mount, you can weld right over it with the Polaris. I'm not sure about this. I'm going to chip it, grind it, and then weld it. You see I opened this all the way up, chased the crack as far as I could see it. So here's kind of a half-time report on that side of the bucket. The other side is still untouched. But this side here is coming together really well. It's wetting in real nice. Nice strong weld. No pinholes, no contamination. The flux on that Polaris AAA really helps to deal with some of that hard surfacing that is on here that I didn't completely remove, that wasn't completely removable, but seems to be going just fine. So that is 
some 316 rod here in a single pass 225 amps laid down really nice this is some eighth inch building up we're still a little bit shy right there a couple more rods and then this one is done too this is a short jump back in time this shows you the route how i started to weld there laying this in first with 330 seconds then with 1 8 and then right here as i'm doing a once over see that crack here I didn't even catch that. I didn't see it last night. I didn't see it when I was welding. The two joints right next to it. So now, so now this weld here now turned into that weld. The more, the longer I weld, the longer I stay here, the more weld I have. When I'm done, this weld from here all the way up there. In reality, these are two plates. You can see a line here. These plates work harden over time. This bucket is well over. 15 years old and the way how the stress cracks are in it it's really you're just putting a band-aid on here everything under it is work hardened and the work hardened stuff is stress cracked by the time that you start to pry with this bucket this bucket is supposed to have a concrete slab go in here it's a slab removal bucket it's not designed to pry with those tines if you pry with those tines here's where they always break but just years and years of use and some app use, that's when you have stress cracks after stress cracks, stuff you didn't see before, opens up when you weld, and next thing you know is you're redoing the whole thing. My recommendation will be replace this outer plate, replace that outer plate here with a fresh one, and why do I want to do this? When you look at this right there, you see how the tooth is set in to the left, the plate on the right is worn off. Here on the other side, the plate just stops right there where the crack starts. The end on the front is worn off, the tooth is set over to the right. And then you get another, and then you get another hopefully 10 years out of this bucket. Because that backbone needs to come back all the way here as one solid, nice piece. You can tell here. With the wear, it's rounded off. There is material lost over the years. The other material that's not lost is stress cracked. So, yeah, the hard surfacing here is great, but there should be a bunch of hard surfacing here too, because as you can see, that is a wear point right here on the outer edge, which makes that spine really thin. And then you pry a little bit and there you go, it pops and you're gonna break it. So this is good enough for now. This should give the customer, depending on the use, several months, maybe a couple years. In the long term, he has another bucket. He needs to start rebuilding those. So here's the overview of the finished product, or at least finished for today. You can tell all the cracks were gouged out deep. All the weld was replaced with some high strength rod good ductility, good strength. My suspicion is this bucket is made out of AR400 or T1 steel. So Rock Mount Polaris AAA was the right choice to do this. Uh, I had to stop at some point. Can I keep welding on this? Sure, I can keep welding and welding and welding till the cows come home. But this is where it's at and thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.